here is a story that I thought long and hard about following, covering, and it is not clear yet, as a lot of stories aren't. It is a work in progress. And uh, I am going to quote a website that would, would call itself a journalism site. I'm not sure. That depends how loose, in fact, both these parties involved, how loose your interpretation of journalism is. But you will have heard of the BFD. And the BFD is basically the reincarnation of a thing called whale oil run by a guy called Cam Slater. And uh, Cam is not, um, un you know, unaccustomed to controversy. He's been sued for defamation. People play, say serious things about him. He's, many people would say he's a terrible right-wing troll, but occasionally he gets the odd good story. And I want to talk you through this um, quietly and clearly and as much as possible without um, emotional hyperbole. You will be aware last Tuesday, nearly a week ago, that there was the first major protest at Parliament since uh, the occupation, as people would call it. It was, in effect, a Brian Tamaki rally to announce the attempt to formulate some sort of alliance of parties on the right of New Zealand politics and in that it appears to be remarkably unsuccessful. It was peaceful, didn't involve anyone getting hit, and it was, I, I thought, in some ways a good event because it showed we can protest and disagree with each other in a civilised way. One person or two people from Australia who are slightly uh, Cam Slater-ish uh, were going to attend that. Um, one of them was called... Avi Yemeni, and Avi Yemeni works for an outfit called Rebel News in Australia, which is a kind of, oh, I, I'm not going to call it a news site, it's a kind of social media news site, which tends to be on the right and probably in the same ilk as Whale Oil and the BFD in New Zealand. And, of course, it's controversial. It aims to be controversial. And Avi Yemeni uh, from Rebel News aims to and is controversial and, attack, and attracts headlines for the things he says and the way he conducts, and I use the term use, uh, loosely, his journalism. He has had trouble with the law in that he was found guilty of throwing a chopping board at his wife and convicted of a domestic violence offence, which was a summary offence, and he did not go to prison for that. I'm not sure if he had to pay a fine or be under supervision, but he didn't go to prison. And he was sued by his brother for defamation, and he says things that outrages the liberal left media, and he is, of course, painted as a Nazi and, he, and all sorts of other things. But it's a free country. Avi Yemeni was going to come here. Now, the Herald and other newspapers report he was going to come here to catch up with Chantel Baker. The news organisations provided no proof of that uh, whatsoever, and he was coming here with a mate called Rukshan Fernando. Um, so, Avi Yemeni was prevented by Immigration New Zealand from entering New Zealand, and news media, mainstream news media reports at the time here in New Zealand suggested that that decision was made by Immigration New Zealand. But Cam Slater at the BFD says he believes, in fact, it was the New Zealand police who intervened to stop both Avi Yemeni and Rukshan Fernando from entering New Zealand and covering the protest at Parliament in Wellington. As I say, it wasn't so much a protest as a destiny church rally. Um, Yemeni, um, and, and uh, what is it? Someone called him a social media personality. I think they say that's not a bad description. Uh, he was stopped at the border, though, and told that he did not meet the character requirements, the character requirements uh, to enter New Zealand and was therefore excluded. Um, he was prevented from boarding his flights and a police spokesman, spokesperson was quoted in media reports here saying they had no comment on the Australian but they were aware of the protest activity planned for Wellington. And a spokesman from Immigration New Zealand said, um, there are certain conditions temporary visitors to New Zealand must meet in order to be eligible for entry, and that the onus is on the visitor to satisfy Immigration New Zealand that they meet all of the requirements at the time.
they travel to New Zealand, including being of good character. Now, part of being of good character, and it's quite specific, is you have to have served in the last, I think, 12 months a year in prison, or last two years a year in prison. Avi Yemeni hasn't. He wouldn't appear on the face of it to meet any of the bad character criteria. Doesn't matter whether you don't like his political views or not. He doesn't appear to meet any of the standard criteria for being turned away at the border. Um, and Immigration New Zealand even admits it made the judgment about Yemeni's character after reading an article by David Fisher in the New Zealand Herald. Um, Yemeni himself has described that article as a smear campaign and he said immigration did not explain was the f uh, that... Oh, so, sorry, he said he was explained, he listened to the criteria and he simply didn't meet those criteria. Well, what the BFD has done, it has found that essentially it was the New Zealand police who went hunting for RV Yemeni. And I'm going to... Um, I'm going to read to you now the memo that the BFD is publishing this morning uh, from Interpol Wellington, and I imagine Interpol Wellington is a cop or two in Wellington, New Zealand police, who get told they're the Interpol police. Um, and I'll read the whole thing to you because I think, and we'll get this up, we'll get this up on the website in the next 24 hours. It is from... Um, and I'm sorry, I'm just going to get my glasses right. I'm reading this off my phone. It's marked urgent. And it says, new matter, Avi Yemeni and Rukshan Fernandez. Subject, criminal history. Dear colleagues, so this is from Interpol Wellington to Interpol Calendar. Wellington takes this opportunity to extend its compliments to Interpol Canberra. Interpol Wellington has received information about the two above named who are believed to be Australian nationals intending to travel to New Zealand to join protest activity at Parliament scheduled on the 23rd of August 2022. New Zealand police would like to stop the two from entering New Zealand and urgently seek any information regarding criminal convictions or any information tending to show they are individuals of bad character associated to criminal groups and individuals on far right, of far-right extremism groups. New Zealand police do not hold any information on the two subjects. Remarkable. Further information. This is again in the police Interpol memo. Both subjects are associated to New Zealand social media commentator Chantel Baker and are expected to meet her at the protest in Parliament posing as reporters. Avi Yenemi is noted by commentators as a far-right extremism commentator. Avi Yemeni has proudly called himself at a London protest in 2018 the world's proudest Jewish Nazi. Rukshan Fernandez is noted as a misinformation super spreader. Rushkin has been labelled in a hero of anti-mandate, anti-vax, anti-government movement. Uh, Interpol Wellington, the signature of the person has been redacted in this story. That is from Interpol Wellington to Interpol Canberra. Um, I think what that memo shows is that on the strength of, and I noted the Herald story was actually anonymous. I, I said it was by David Fisher. It wasn't. It didn't have a byline on it. I have got no doubt that that Herald story was based on information from people like Kate Hanna at the Disinformation Project. The Disinformation Project, a very shady organisation set up by the Prime Minister's office, answerable to the Prime Minister's office, and very reluctant to be interviewed by truly independent media like the platform. Happy to talk to someone like Paula Penfold who's in the pocket and pay of the government. So what we have now is not a set of rules at the border where officially available information is checked and people are rejected or not rejected. We have police, and I might add that Interpol are not allowed to act in a political fashion. It is part of the covenant of Interpol that you stay out of politics, domestic politics, religious affairs and matters. We have a police force on the advice of a woke media 
actively seeking to exclude someone from New Zealand on the grounds they do not like their politics. That they do not like their politics. Now, I don't know that in the normal course of events, I would cross a road to relieve myself in RV Yemeni's pocket if his trousers um, were on fire. But there is a principle here. And the principle is we do not live in a Stasi state where a group of intellectual elites aligned with the political powers of the day can target individuals who they disagree with and get agencies of state like the police and international police forces to hunt people down and exclude them and impinge on their normal civil rights and their everyday activities. And I cannot be confident on the information presented in the BFD today that I'm living in a society that values those principles. So I think we have to have answers from the government about what Interpol did and whether or not the government knew. Uh, I hope to have Avi Yemeni on the program tomorrow. I believe he's probably going to take legal action, uh, action against the New Zealand government for this. Um, and we might talk to Chantelle Baker too, I think is somewhat bemused at her association with these individuals. And this is all done on the strength of a snotty argument in the Herald without even a byline. But that's enough to get the New Zealand police hunting this guy down and writing to Canberra for more information so they can keep him out, right? Do you think that's right? And I've tried to explain that very simply, that story. I hope I have achieved that. Um, do you think that's right? That a newspaper or a news media brands someone as something, says they're this, and then the police read the article and say, oh, let's go and hunt them down. Let's try and stop them. It's what that it says. Let's try and stop, stop them coming to New Zealand. Police would like to stop the two from entering New Zealand. Why? Who makes that decision on behalf of the police? And what bloody right, apart from the law, do police have to make that decision? Or were they instructed by someone else, someone in government? and urgently seek any information regarding criminal convictions or any information tending to show they are individuals of bad character. That's what the memo says. It basically says, we want dirt so we can keep them out. Um, I never thought I'd say this. I recommend after 8 o'clock this morning you get on the BFD website. You can read the full story yourself. We'll republish it. And I, I'm going to be honest here. I didn't break this story. I've got contacts around, so I knew it was happening, but I do think it is a worthwhile story. And I would hope um, that I get some questions to the government on this uh, at a forum in the very, very near future.